Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install Sparky Linux. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. I got the Sparky Linux website here in front of me where we're going to go ahead and download the Sparky Linux image off of. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below to the website. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and navigate to the download section. And once you're in the download section, if we scroll down a little bit, you have uh, two choices here, the stable release and the semi rolling release. So you can choose whatever satisfies your needs. If you want something that is at the cutting edge of the latest development, you can go with the uh, semi rolling release, but you will be sacrificing some stability since those updates are still in the testing phase. So if you don't want to, sacrifice any stability go with a stable version so i'm going to actually go with the uh, semi-rolling release the install will be the same for both types i'm going to go ahead and click on this semi-release model and then we'll scroll down a little bit and we can see that there are many different options to choose from here if you're new and stopping by to watch an install today please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos and what we have here is various different 64-bit architecture installers the difference really is just the type of desktop environment so you got the lxqt here mate version here and xfce version here on the right hand side and then if you scroll down even more there are the minimal gui as well as the minimal command line interface options so if you just need a terminal this one's the one to go with but uh, otherwise you might want to install a desktop environment so today I'm going to go ahead and go with the LXQT and uh, you have different mirrors here to go and download from. So torrents or these two mirrors here it seems like. If you want to check the integrity of your ISO you can go ahead and get the M MD5 or SHA sums. That way you can compare what you download to these given values. So I'm going to go ahead and just use SourceForge and uh, it says here that it, my download will be starting shortly so just give it a moment here and here we are our download has begun and now that i've downloaded the iso i'm going to launch the blend etcher app in order to flash the image onto a usb cd dvd of my choice so we can go down here and just type in blenna and launch the app blenna etcher is an easy to use application available for windows mac and linux I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk such as UNEP Bootin or Rufus. So the first thing we want to do with Belena is select an image and that's the one we just got done downloading. So you see here we have the Sparky Linux 2020.02.1 x86.64 LXQT desktop environment. So we're going to select that and hit open. Next we're going to select a target but I have to put my USB in real quick and it should automatically populate which it did so if you have more than one USB CD or DVD you'll be able to go ahead and select from the list here and then just make sure to select the proper USB CD or DVD because all of its contents that are currently on it will be erased in order to flash the sparky Linux installer on so once you select the proper USB CD or DVD go ahead and hit continue. And now the final thing, you just have to hit flash and you might be asked for your administrative privileges to go ahead and do so. Go ahead and hit yes. And after you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Sparky Linux on, and then you'll insert it. After that, you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the boot order around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into your BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys like F2 or F10. Then finding a tab that's usually called boot order and exchanging the order so that the bootable disk is first. After you have that set up, you'll save and exit out of your BIOS and then you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. All right, if you see this screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion. So with this Linux distribution, if you don't go ahead and stop the timeout, it will automatically load you into the first option, which is the option that we want, so it's perfectly fine. But uh, what we'll select is the Sparky Linux US English option, which should boot us into the live image of the Sparky Linux distribution. So let's go ahead and do that. 
give it a moment here. And now that we're loaded into our live desktop of Sparky Linux, we can go ahead and on the left hand side, you can select the Sparky installer. So let's double click on that. And now we're just being asked what we want to do with the installer. We'll go ahead and execute it. And here we'll get to select what uh, language we want to run the installer with. So go ahead and hit the drop down, select whatever language you'd like. American English is fine for me, and that is the default. Afterwards, go ahead and select next. Here we get to select our time zone for which we're currently in, and mine will be in Budapest today. You also have a few options down here. Make sure you look at this as well. But the system language will be set to American English, United States by default, which is fine for me. But you can also hit the change and then change to whatever locale and character set that you want. And as you can see, the numbers and dates for the locale have been set to Magyar, which is not correct for me. So I'm going to go ahead and search for the uh, US format here, which should be under EN US, as you can see here. And I'm going to go ahead and select that. And once you have your system language and the number dates format selected, go ahead and hit next. Here you can choose your default keyboard type. English US is fine for me as the default. And I'll go ahead and test my keyboard in here in this little text field as I typed in QWERTY and it came out QWERTY so that everything's great there. I'll go ahead and hit next once I'm ready. Here we'll set up where we want to install Sparky Linux on. So uh, the default's fine for me since I only have one disk to install it on. You'll want to make sure you're, cur you're selecting the correct storage space that you want. So if you have multiple ones, make sure you're installing it on the proper storage disk or else your, the contents of your storage disk will be completely erased. As you're scrolling through the various hard disk space, you'll see down here what's currently on them. So as you can see here, I have an unpartitioned space without anything on it. So that's perfect to erase the disk because it will delete all data that's currently present on that storage device that you select. So as it says right here, you can also do manual partitioning, but that's a little more advanced. So we're going to stick to the erase disk and it shows you what it's going to do here. So currently there's nothing on here. And afterwards, there's going to be a 32 gigabyte EXT formatted storage space. And you can also select where you want your bootloader location. So you have three options uh, in the system partition, the master boot record, of the dev SDA or if you don't want to install the bootloader at all if you already have one that's a good option to select but we're going to stick to the default option you can also encrypt your system which will just force you to have to put a password in every time you want to go ahead and load your system this is suggested for extra security measures but uh, once you have your options picked out here we're going to go ahead and select next go ahead and put your name in as well as a username that you want to use while logging in you can also go ahead and name the PC, so different devices on the network will see you as this. Go ahead and put a password in and confirm that password. And then you have a few options down here, which you can actually set up a different password for the root user if you unselect this option. But uh, for me, it's fine. I'm going to keep it that. And then log me in automatically without asking for a password. You can also uh, check or uncheck this box. Um, by default, it is checked, but uh, I'll go ahead and uncheck it since I don't want anybody to be able to just restart the computer and then automatically log in as my user. And you can see here that uh, it says my password fails the dictionary check, probably because it's too easy. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit more to that. And there we go, passes the password check. So once I have that, I'll go ahead and select the next option. Here's just an overview of everything that's going to be changed on the storage disk that's selected. So all of our location information, our keyboard information that we already set up, the partitioning scheme and how we're gonna partition the current disk. And if you're happy with all of this, you'll go ahead and hit install. Sparky Linux is a Debian based Linux distribution which claims to be fast, lightweight and very customizable. They have many different types of desktop environments available up to about 20 different environments for their users. And it offers a minimal GUI as well as a command line interface install. Sparky Linux also supports uh, most wireless and network cards with its base system. That way you hopefully don't have to spend a bunch of time trying to find the proper drivers for your Wi-Fi devices.
And as the installer finishes here, it tells you that it's all done. And while we're booting, we'll want to make sure and go ahead and remove any installation media that you may have in your computer so you don't boot back into the installer or the live image of the system. Otherwise, you'll have to reboot once more and take out the media to get to your newly installed system. So we're going to go ahead and select the Restart Now option and hit Done. Give it a few moments here. Go ahead and put your password in for the user you just created. Give it a few moments here while it loads up the desktop screen. And we're welcomed here with the first run of Sparky. It says thank you for installing Sparky Linux. And we can now update the system or we can go ahead and exit out in order to look at our new desktop, which let's go ahead and do that for now. Later, you can go ahead and install any updates that are missing. So we're just gonna hit exit. And I'm not going to remove the first run of Sparky from the system yet since we uh, didn't hit upgrade on it. I'll just go ahead and hit exit on this as well. That way it comes up next time I reboot. All right, and at this point, you've successfully installed Sparky Linux onto your computer. Congratulations. We'll just go through the desktop environment here real quick. So on the bottom left-hand side, we have menu, which is kind of like a start menu. You can search for applications in here. So if I wanted to go ahead and change my resolution, I can go to the monitor settings. And then up top here, we have different subcategories that exist on the Sparky Linux system. So they come with the LibreOffice suite here by default. You can also go to the leave, which allows you to hibernate, reboot, shut down, and some other various things. You can also lock the screen from here. If we go back to the desktop on the bottom here, we can select between multiple workspaces. So we got two workspaces here we can select from. And then if we want to upgrade our system, so an update, we can click this button since we haven't uh, done that already. And then on the right hand side, we have our clipboard as well as our current wired connection. And then we can also manage our removable devices from here as well as change our volume up and down. The current time is here as well. And then you can go ahead and hit this icon in order to take you back to the desktop environment. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Sparky Linux. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.